So I think in this episode of Men's Finest, uh, we're going to talk about shirts, tailoring, and kind of trends for 2020. But I want to focus on one thing, which is 100% vital to me, which is what a normal guy, you and me, should buy in 2020. So I'll show you the examples of fabrics that I'll be playing with, some examples of shirts that I've just ordered um, that I think are going to be hot. So... If you're ready for this, if you've got 20 minutes to spare, make yourself a cup of coffee or a tea, and let's do this. So I would talk with this sartorial um, kind of shirt making journey. Um, needs to start in kind of where a lot of shirts start which is you know you would think that generally speaking a shirt would be something that it's um, you know made in England made in London uh, lots of companies are on Savaro on German street especially um, you know making shirts beautiful shirts bespoke shirts but is that where it all started and I think it's very important to kind of have that perspective on on shirts and see where they came from so you can actually um, you know be more knowledgeable and you can also um, sort of decide on your own what you want to do and where you want to buy your shirts from um, what I'm doing right now is I'm going to show you in a minute I'm preparing a shirt for you to uh, to have a look at because um, there'll be certain fabric this season 2020 that I think are absolutely vital and I think every single person who is even remotely interested in style but most importantly um, interested in looking good should consider so I'll show you that in a second what these are and, and how can we use them but let's talk about first about um, the sort of shirt makers and German Street and where we are and um, it's it's very interesting because I, for a number of years, I, when I was kind of educating myself about style and I and I wanted to look good, and that's where, you know, a lot of my thesis and a lot of my um, ideas about style coming from is, is obviously education. Um, I was also under the impression, always, that Savaro is the bee's knees, you know, that you want to be there and you, you definitely want to, yeah, well, if you ever in London, you have to go to Slavero, and you, you know, and I went, you know, and I went, and I've been there, and um, you know, a few times, and every time I go there, there is, there is a sense of disappointment. In a sense that I was, I remember I was walking there once and thinking, and Slavero is only short street, uh, you know, in London, and, and it's, it's just nice Victorian kind of looking building, you know, nothing spectacular. If, you know, if someone hasn't told you that it's Savaro, you wouldn't know. But it's but it's those few shops that you kind of walk past and they they look, obviously, like tailoring shops. But it's literally a handful of them. I would say, you know, visible, nice shops like Huntsman and, um, you know, a few others. Like, it's a handful of them. It's not that many actually, you know, super visible. And what I'm trying to say is, I think this notion of it has to be Savaro, it has to be German Street, it has to be London, it kind of go goes away in my opinion because there's obviously fans, and I'm, you know, and I, um, I think if I if I really wanted to, you know, uh, to have something bespoke made, I would probably rather go to Naples than Savaro, to be honest. But that's just because um, I like. Italian styles and Italian tailoring, I guess. Um, you know, so so then you'll see a lot of my um, influence on what I do is actually uh, very much Italian sort of fabrics um, and cuts and finishes. Um, but yeah, with regards to Savaro, I think if I had money, I would go to Naples to start off with. So that, that tells you kind of something. Obviously in London for more... Um, kind of awareness perspective obviously go and visit them and see what they are but so don't obviously take my word for it but I, I was disappointed because to me it, it, it I visualized this as a 
as a place where all the style enthusiasts, it's a bit like Pitti Uomo, all the style enthusiasts can go in there in Florence, right? You can go in there, be a style enthusiast, and you can sort of have a smell of this big fashion brands, have a have a taste, you can talk to the shirt makers, you can talk to creators, whereas I was just that under impression that if you haven't got millions, if you haven't got, you know, bank accounts of six, six zero, seven zeros, sum of money, then you shouldn't actually even walk in there. That's how I felt. So I, I I never want to create that impression. You know, right now my office obviously is in Albert Dock in Liverpool, beautiful place. Very posh, a lot of people get kind of intimidated by this. But I don't think they should, you know, I don't think they should because it's, um, I've created this space for people to enjoy tailoring and to have a sit down and have a have a nice brew and and sort of have that feel that they are in the right place to create their next garment. So, so my my idea is never going to be to uh, to kind of have the same sensation, the same feeling as um, as Savaro would give you. You know, on the other hand, not that I could, not that I. Um, Actually, I'm a Savile Row tailor. I'm I'm not, and and that's also okay, you know. And and if you're one of those guys that makes things abroad and um, and not in the UK, that's also fine. Like, don't worry about it. It's not. That's not the end goal. That's not the final results for uh, for a lot of people. So, right. I want to show you this. This is one of the shirts uh, that I've been playing with. This is a UK brand, uh, but why I'm specifically not telling you what the brand name is, is because um, I've been asked not to, because most likely I'm going to be using uh, the same manufacturer to make those shirts, but that's beside the point. What I want to show you is, is if one very interesting thing. Skinny fit shirts. And you think, oh, I'm not skinny, I'm, you know, this is not for me. I, you know, I've got too big, a, too big of a hip, that sort of thing. But it's skinny fit, but also it's a stretch material. So what you end up having is a situation where that thing stretches a lot. And if you ask me what's happening in 2020, I would say that a lot of fabrics will be like this because the comfort when you wear this how do i describe this um it's unbelievable because if you're wearing a shirt that it's stretched and it's kind of made um to you in a sense that it has got ah uh, you know more or less the dimensions you need you can go size down and then let it stretch out and that, my friends, is something that you should consider if you haven't got one. So there's plenty of fabrics from uh, that sort of stretch family fabrics that I'm testing right now. And I want to talk to you about what to look out for in a good shirt. Okay, so what to look out for in a ready-to-wear shirt, you ask me. Um, I would say a number of things. First of all, I would say the material but also depends on like what you're looking for. If you are looking for that very tight fit, I would say let's go for um, stretch, slim fit or even skinny from all those major um, kind of high street brands. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about H&M, Zara, Topman, Next, Moss Bros. Um, yeah, you know, you know those brands. I, I, I'm sure I'm, I missed some, and some people would say, "Oh, you know, what about this? What about that? You know, do you, do you not like this brand?" I, it's not the case of liking or not. I sometimes take clients, uh, my clients, uh, to those shops as well, just because it's convenient, right? If if a client needs a shirt that it's, I don't know, a couple of white shirts, and uh, we more or less know his, um, you know, the exact um, kind of measurements. Could we easily go to Zara and buy him two shirts uh, if he needs them for tomorrow? Yes, because we cannot make a shirt in a day for the price that he wants to pay for them. So, um, so yeah, 
So sometimes I'm using those shops, and of course, I'm not even trying to hide this because it's 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 not wrong. I think using tools that are at your disposal um, that are available to you, it's a it's a it's a smart thing to do. So don't worry about it if you are again in this style journey and and you know buying Zara and buying Moss Bros and buying um, ah, whoever else, right? It's it's not it's not a problem. I wouldn't say that. It's something you should be worried about and, and something that you should be hiding from other people and uh, and your peers and wherever else. I, hey, listen, <laughs> tell you something. I went to see um, uh, a few footballers recently in Monaco, which is um, a little country uh, inside France. Um, basically, Monaco is famous from... Uh, people not paying tax because there is no tax there. So obviously it attracts a lot of um, uh, very interesting characters. So I went to see a few footballers who are obviously um, generally considered as a as a wealthy wealthy individuals, right? Especially these days when you know an average footballer can be sold easily for 20, 30 million and not even play a game, you know, for the new club. So things has changed slightly. Um, so I'm, I went to see a, a few footballers in Monaco, and when I talked to them, we actually um, <laughs> found out that some of the purchases they make, especially on stretchy trousers, uh, maybe some tops, maybe some uh, basics like uh, socks or um, what else. Um, like a t-shirts but like like on the on the shirts kind of t-shirts they were be, they were buying them from Zara they were buying them from H&M they were buying them from shops in Monaco there are kind of a high street shops they were slightly more expensive than Zara here which was bizarre i think because why would they be um if everywhere else in the world the price are the same but i've noticed that they were like maybe 20% more in Monaco that they were in anywhere else. That was kind of weird. Um, but they, those footballers, were still buying Zara things. And that got me kind of thinking that it doesn't really matter. And that's an advice to you. It doesn't really matter where you buy your things. As long as it fits you and as long as you like it. And those two things matter a lot. And if you follow always those two things, you're going to be good to go. So remember that going forward. When you're going to be making your next purchases, when you're going to be advising your client, when you're going to be thinking of what to do next in your wardrobe, two questions you have to ask yourself. Am I, am I really in love with this? Do I like this? Would I, am I going to be wearing this for you know foreseeable future? And if the answer is yes, I buy this, the answer is maybe or no, I don't. And it doesn't really matter the price tag. And I know some people would, again, go against that and say, well, well, price tag obviously matters and branding matters. Yes, it does. But if you've got lots of money, then maybe it matters that you can sh go to a golf club, a yacht club, and actually wave that Balenciaga or whoever, whatever else, mm, sort of name on your T-shirt, but no one cares. And you just paid 250 euros for this, so... You have to be careful. This is another interesting shirt from the manufacturer I cannot name, uh, but it's made in, uh, I believe in China, but the fabric is Italian, which is very interesting. So Italian fabric, also stretch. So again, another nice looking fabric fantastic feel it feels very soft uh, obviously it has got some elastin in it so so that's why it's stretch but if you need to look at this like the way it stretches oh, that gives you that gives you lots of room to breathe so stretch shirts my friends 2020 that's my bet so that this these two other fabrics and the shirts i want to show you uh, stretchy fabrics and if you look at that how much it stretches I mean this is what I'm talking about so this is kind of blue beautiful finish skinny fit is, is uh, sort of similar to what I said to you before and this is also a stretchy fabric slightly different because it has got a bit of a pattern um, 
amazing, amazing stretchy fabrics, it is the way to go in 2020. Trust me, if you can get hold of them, buy them. So, so far, we've talked about a few things. We talked about the fabric itself, the stretch. Uh, we talked about kind of Savaro, German Street, uh, Monaco, um, Zara, footballers, that sort of thing. I would say, and I confirm here right now, that the most important thing when you buy in a shirt is, or buying anything for that matter, is to buy it as as reasonably priced as possible. What do I mean by this? Is if you're trying to get a sale or get something that it's um, half price, third price, tenth of the price, fiftieth of the price, which I've seen before, um, you should think about it and you should give it a go. You should consider it. Why? Because you start building your wardrobe, um, especially if you haven't got loads of money, from kind of button up, so you're trying to figure out the, the pieces. Um, you know, shirts like this are that are stretchy and has got one monotone color, and you can perhaps use it for you know many occasions jeans, chinos, that sort of thing. And yet, you feel like you're wearing a t shirt, not a shirt. I'm always trying to kind of make my clients think that. Dressing nice and dressing good and dressing well is not as synonymous, is not synonym to um, feeling uncomfortable. And a lot of people connect those two things. Oh, if I'm wearing a suit, oh, Jesus, fuck, I'm wearing a suit. I hate wearing a suit because it's uncomfortable. Well, it's uncomfortable because probably you've got the wrong suit, man. It's uncomfortable because probably your fabric is rubbish. It's uncomfortable because probably you've never had anything tailored. It's uncomfortable because even if you had something tailored or, or you had them off the rack, you never actually went to alteration place to make, etc. Things should not be uncomfortable. We like tracks and we like buttons and we like, you know, T-shirts because we feel comfortable in it. Why don't we just do the same for, for clothing in general? So when you're going to be buying things for your future self, for your wardrobe, Make sure that you buy stuff that it's cheap to buy. It doesn't mean it's low quality because you can go to a place like TK Maxx and 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 literally go something on a bargain. I, I went recently to TK Maxx here in Liverpool and there were some gold labels and I checked them because I could not believe Gucci um, uh, blazers and vests and waistcoats and things like that for like 60, 70 pounds out of from 600 to 1,000 pounds. And I truly believe that was the case because i don't know about you but if you see gucci i run away because it means expensive <laughs> um but that's what it is right they, they, they these houses make money um from early adopters so for people who are not counting the money they just want to come in get the new stuff so they can show it at the banquet or at the golf course or at the yacht club or at their helipad wearing the nicest newest gucci coat and they think they're going to impress someone but they will never. Um, so, last final thought on this. Don't get bogged down if things are not produced in the UK. Don't get bogged down if it's not German Street or Savile Row. Wear what's comfortable for you. Wear what, what's going to kind of last you a bit longer as well in that respect. that If you're buying an, 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 a Zara shirt or H&M shirt, I, I don't mind these companies, so please don't take me to court. Um, because I use them still. So, But if you buy from them, they're obviously cheaper quality, they lower quality, because they've been probably made in some sort of, I don't want to say sweatshop, but somewhere where the quality to price levels is kind of matched. Versus if you're going to go for me to measure stuff, which is produced in England, for instance, uh, all of a sudden you're going to get a, a, a nicer shirt, but also, you know, the person who's made it is on the same salary as you know as as everyone else in this country so the human side of thing matters but most importantly when you're starting out you couldn't care less i didn't care less when i started out i just want to have something nice cheap uh so i would go to sale i mean these days you can you can get a a, a nice pair of trousers for 10 pounds on sale from 60 from 50. you know made, made in the sweatshop but it's the fabric is nice um 
the company has got a good reputation, etc., etc. So buying the story. So please do that when you're going to be buying your wardrobe. Let me know how you, how it went, how did you do it, um, the sort of pitfalls and downsides of building the wardrobe, and um, things that we discussed here. Was it useful? Was it not? Let me know in the comments below. Hmm, thank you so much for spending so many minutes of your life listening to me. I appreciate it.